welcome to episode 262 of the Postal Hub podcast. I'm Ian Kerr. This week we're going to talk about the IPC's Global Postal Industry Report 2021. I'll be joined by Austin Reynolds, who's the Manager Market Intelligence at IPC, to talk about some of the key findings from the report. Before we get to Austin, a quick word from Derek Osborne about this year's International Delivery Benchmarking Workshop. Joined by Derek Osborne and Derek, coming up uh, in the middle of this year will be the next delivery workshop, next international delivery benchmarking workshop. Tell us where and when, I guess, is the first question. That's right, Ian. It's going to be in Vienna this year, hosted by Austria Post, 7th to 9th of June. 7th to 9th of June in Vienna, and Austrian Post will indeed be taking us to one of their sorting facilities. Is that right? Yeah, we're going to one of the. We'll visit a delivery depot, and we'll also visit one of their new uh, parcel parcel sorting centres just outside Vienna. So, uh, who are the kind of people who should attend this event? Um, this is this event is specifically for people who are responsible for delivery operations in their in their postal operator. So, it's the people who are designing and organising from a day to day how the delivery operations will operate. So, whether it's letters or parcels. It's all covered these days. Letters and parcels, and in particular, one of the topics, the main themes, is how we adjust to the more parcels, fewer letters, and how we manage that transition. And so we will have presentations from various posts talking about how they are confront- confronting this issue? Yeah. I mean, to give you an example, we will have Post and Nord, Post NL, Deutsche Post, Royal Mail, Austria Post, CTT Portugal, Post Nord, Canada Post. Jersey Post, B Post, Posti, and Post, obviously Austria Post, all talking about what they do in the different elements. So whether it's the operations for letter and parcels, or delivery models, or routing, dynamic routing, or sustainability challenges is obviously becoming a big topic as well. And there's always lots of space for networking and just having a quiet chat with your colleagues about how they are trying to confront these things, whether it's falling letter volumes, growing parcel volumes, labour issues, whatever it might be. This is the thing. And obviously, and during the pandemic, there wasn't this, hasn't been the chance for in-depth discussions and side discussions. And we, we were fortunate to be able to hold uh, another workshop last year in September in Helsinki. And people were very pleased to be there in the room with the ability to talk to different people. It's a established network, but we welcome any anybody who wants to join, uh, who's got their relevant responsibilities. And you know, nobody has all the good ideas. So if you, you don't think you know everything that you need to know to run a delivery operation, come and learn from your colleagues. And it's, you can't buy that information; it's not available on Google. So if anybody's interested in finding out more or registering, where should they go? Uh, if they go, it's now all on my website, which is www plethora.co.uk, but I think you're going to put it on your information there. I will, so it's plethora, P-L-E-F-O-R-A dot co dot UK, and I'll stick a link on the postalhub.com to the website as well, so you can click through there if you haven't been able to jot it down. There's booking information and, and the program as we develop it will be there. So go to the website and check out all the details there. Derek Osborne, thanks for joining us on the Postal Hub today. Thank you, Ian. I'm joined by Austin Reynolds. Austin is the Manager Market Intelligence at IPC. We're going to talk about some of the key findings of the 2021 IPC Global Postal Industry Report. Austin, welcome. Tell us a bit about the what the report is and sort of how it fits in with what you do at IPC. Yeah, well, first of all, it's great to be here with you, Ian. So thanks for having me on. Um, the Global, in, uh, Global Postal Industry Report is a report that IPC produces every year. Uh, it's a comprehensive and very detailed review of the postal industry, and it covers two main things. Uh, on the one hand, we look at overall industry trends and how they're evolving. And on the other, we benchmark the performance of the 53 postal operators that make up the report. Uh, and they're from Asia Pacific, Europe, North America, and Latin America. So we line up those posts side by side to see how they're performing across a wide range of industry metrics, uh, including financial information like revenue costs and profitability, 
but also a big range of other indicators like uh, mail and parcel volumes and on-time delivery performance. And that analysis is based on a rich data set that we've built up here at IPC for over two decades now. Around that data sits a rich set of qualitative information. We conduct interviews with a wide range of experts across the industry on key topics, and we also run future-focused surveys with our industry contacts, uh, ranging from analysts and research and strategy teams all the way up to C-suite executives. So that more qualitative research adds a lot of color and depth to the uh, analysis as well. And yeah, as the manager of marketing intelligence here at IPC, I have to say it's a very interesting time to be analyzing the postal industry. Now, is the report just focusing on IPC members or is it broader than just the IPC membership? No, it's broader than the IPC membership, uh, Ian. So IPC has 25 uh, member posts, uh, but the report covers 53 postal operators from around the world. So um, yeah, Latin America, uh, North America, Europe, Asia Pacific. Now, let's talk about uh, the performance of the postal sector during the pandemic. So just, can you give us a few highlights of how the postal industry overall has performed during this, oh, I'm going to say it, everybody, these unprecedented times? <laughs> yeah, sure. So I think posts have really shown their resilience uh, during the pandemic. Uh, they've clearly faced big challenges over the past year and a half, you know, from having to implement social distancing across their sorting and delivery operations uh, to facing capacity issues for air freight, for example, as borders were closed and uh, demand ramped up. But despite all of those headwinds, the postal industry has continued to grow. So overall, industry revenue reached 442 billion euros in 2020, and that represented an increase of around 20 billion euros year on year. Uh, that level of growth was very strong compared to what we've seen in previous years. And the key driver of that growth was the huge uplift in e-commerce that we've seen uh, since the pandemic hit and the resulting surge in packet and parcel volumes as people were stuck at home and, and ordering more, uh, more, um, yeah, more goods online. So parcels revenue was up very strongly, but that growth was partly offset by a decline in mail revenue. Um, and mail revenue declined as lockdowns hit economic activity uh, and businesses generally sent fewer letters both at home and abroad. So, yeah, COVID-19 has really fast-tracked these two big structural trends of mail decline and parcels growth uh, that we've been uh, seeing for, for some time now. So COVID-19 has really fast-tracked these two big structural trends of mail decline and parcels growth that we've been seeing for, for some time now. Um, we also saw growth for other segments within the industry, like financial services and logistics and freight. Uh, but the main driver for growth was, as I said, parcels, and the main drag on growth was the declining mail. Um, and just to note that I'm talking in aggregate here, which means that the giants of the postal industry, like Japan Post, China Post, Deutsche Post, DHL, and, and USPS, are particularly driving the trends I've mentioned. Uh, but at the same time, these are common themes that we're seeing for posts, you know, both big and small, uh, across the industry. Looking then at letter volumes, what impact has the pandemic had on letter volumes whether overall or even by segment? Yeah, so the headline figure here is that mail volume fell by 16% on average in 2020. And that rate of decline was more than twice as fast as what we'd seen in 2018 and 2019. So the pandemic has clearly uh, accelerated the uh, decline in traditional mail volume. Um, that trend seems to have continued into 2021 as well. So the very steep decline in mail volume that we saw in Q2 2020, when much of the world was in lockdown, that did ease somewhat in the second half of 2020 as restrictions were lifted and uh, business activity picked up again. But in 2021, we haven't really seen this big bounce back uh, in mail volume. And that's not too much of a surprise. I mean, even at the outset of the pandemic, there was a sense that mail declines would be brought forward a couple of years uh, as a result of the crisis. And indeed, that seems to be uh, what's happened. That said, there are clearly nuances to make here. Um, the first is that rates of decline varied considerably across posts, um, from marginal declines of just 5% all the way up to 60%, so losing more than half of mail volume in a single year. Um, the second thing to note is that different mail products have been impacted in different ways. Advertising mail, for example, saw the steepest decline of all products, uh, between 20 and 30% on average in 2020, uh, as businesses delayed or cancelled their marketing campaigns and ad advertising budgets were cut. Uh, but ad mail is obviously tied somewhat to the, the economic cycle. So as business activity picks up, we'd expect some improvement in the performance of ad mail as countries 
uh, begin to recover, particularly as ad mail remains a key marketing channel for businesses in many countries. Um, International mail also saw significant declines, particularly in the early stages of the pandemic, as cross-border operations were disrupted and, and general uncertainty saw uh, demand for international mail fall. Um, and transactional mail, so things like bills, statements, invoices and notices, they saw more moderate declines. And I think Post have done a great job uh, in keeping people, businesses and government connected, for example, delivering government leaflets about COVID-19 to keep citizens uh, informed. I think the final thing to note is that uh, while declines have pressured mail revenue and profitability across the industry, uh, Post have continued to adapt and optimise uh, their mail operations. Post the Norge in, in Norway, for example, implemented uh, the largest restructure in its history in 2020 by switching to alternate day delivery for address mail. That's delivering letters Monday, Wednesday, Friday one week, then on Tuesday and Thursday the next week. So while Post the Norge saw mail revenue fall by a fifth for the year, as its mail volume fell by a similar amount, uh, this major change to its operations saw profitability for its mail division improve strongly amid the pandemic. So that's just one story among many of how posts have adapted as mail volumes have declined. And that uh, that um, theme of adapting your business model is sort of well, going to, going to sort of be my next question, in fact. So well, we're seeing this, the letter volumes, which is clearly the traditional business for the postal sector. How are posts diversifying? So not just sort of adapting to the change, but also diversifying their business. Yeah, so we generally look at diversification from two angles. Uh, the first is in terms of business segments. So how much revenue posts generate from traditional mail delivery versus other segments like financial services. The second is in terms of geography. So how much revenue posts generate from their domestic market versus international markets. And on both counts, the industry is becoming more and more diversified. So just to quantify that, over the past five years, we've seen the mail share of total industry revenue fall from 35% down to 29% on aggregate. Uh, and that's also a general trend uh, we've seen across posts. Now, the international share of total revenue, that has risen from 21 to 24% uh, over the past five years. And so, yeah, how exactly are posts going about diversifying their businesses? Well, in two main ways. So organically and in postal terms, that's generally referring to e-substitution, driving down mail revenue, while e-commerce is driving up parcels revenue. And a good example here is Royal Mail. So parcels represented more than 70% of its group revenue in 2020. And for the first time ever, parcels rather than letters accounted for the majority of its postal division revenue. Um, so that organic shift from mail to parcels, which COVID-19 has accelerated, is one way uh, posts are diversifying. The other way is through inorganic growth. So that's mergers, acquisitions, and joint ventures. We've been uh, seeing quite a, a bit of that across the industry. So over the last decade, there have been over 350 controlling acquisitions made by posts. About half of those were of parcels and logistics companies, and around 40% were of uh, international companies, so those outside of the post domestic market. Uh, now, again, there, there are many interesting stories here, and I'll just highlight uh, a few of the more recent ones. The first is uh, Post of Slovenia. It recently bought a local Slovenian logistics firm called Inter Europa, which is a key logistics operator in southeastern Europe. Uh, that acquisition now makes Post of Slovenia the largest logistics company in Slovenia and a major player in the region. And Inter Europa, the new subsidiary, now accounts for over a third of the post revenue. So, yeah, in, in a space of just a few years, it's really ramped up its logistics operations. Uh, Le Groupe La Poste is another example. In 2020, it bought an Italian delivery company called BRT. And as a result, its parcel delivery network under the DPD brand is now the largest parcel network in Europe. And uh, just before we move on, Ian, although we're seeing this general trend of diversification across the industry, the mail share of revenue still varies you know, widely across posts. So from between 10% for the most diversified posts to more than 90% for the least diversified posts. So posts are still at very different stages of this journey from being mail-focused companies delivering some parcels uh, to parcels-focused companies delivering some mail. And parcels was going to be my next question as well. So how have you seen parcel volumes evolve during the pandemic? 
So obviously, e-commerce has grown very strongly uh, during lockdowns. According to Euromonitor International, uh, global e-commerce sales rose by over 25% in 2020. Uh, and for most posts, that meant delivering millions and millions of extra parcels uh, throughout the year. So across all of the posts that we analysed in the report, uh, parcel volumes were up 15% on average in 2020, but many saw volume growth much faster than that, well over 50% in some cases. And of course, uh, in Q2 2020, when COVID first struck, posts delivered peak period level uh, volumes for many weeks. And though that tapered off as the year went on, uh, Q4 came around and again, there was this big spike in volume. Uh, and Post, for example, reported that its, uh, that its parcel volumes in Q4 more than doubled compared to the previous year. You know, as the, the usual holiday shopping period kind of overlapped with the tighter COVID-19 restrictions in Ireland. One big question in 2020 was uh, to what extent this big growth in e-commerce would stick. And here we are uh, over 18 months in and we're still seeing elevated parcel volumes, even as lockdowns have eased. So it really seems that e-commerce has permanently shifted up a gear and that these higher parcel volumes are here to stay. So that's a, that's a picture in broad strokes of how parcel volumes are evolving, but there's also a lot going on around that. Uh, e-commerce delivery is this uh, really dynamic market. We continue to see a strong focus on innovation and value-add services for parcels. Um, first, we're seeing post-scale up investment in their parcel networks to improve efficient, uh, efficiency and expand capacity, uh, opening new parcel facilities, investing in automated sorting, uh, upgrading and expanding vehicle fleets, and so on. Uh, Australia Post, for example, just a few months before the pandemic hit, opened a new parcel centre in Brisbane, uh, which is the largest parcel facility and delivery centre in the Southern Hemisphere. I think it's able to process something like 35,000 parcels an hour. So we're, we're talking pretty big scale. And just a few months ago, Postnell opened a small parcel sorting centre in the Netherlands that uses robots to sort small parcels, uh, which has a maximum uh, capacity of five regular sorting centres. So Posts are making these big investments to scale up uh, their sorting and delivery capabilities. And on top of that, we're seeing posts really focus on the needs of the receiver, uh, so the consumer, the, the C and the B2C flow. And again, there's, there's plenty of examples of this. Uh, post Nord offers real-time Uber-like tracking now for parcel deliveries in Sweden. Royal Mail launched a, a parcel collect service, so picking up parcels and returns uh, directly from consumers. Deutsche Post DHL is expanding its parcel locker network by 60% over the next couple of years. And we've seen some posts, like Croatian Post, uh, Swiss Post, the Grupla Post, uh, buying same day and crowdsourced delivery startups to, to move into the on-demand delivery market. So across many different aspects, convenience, speed, visibility, and so on, we're seeing many new consumer-focused services uh, being rolled out. And the last point I'll make here is that uh, we're also seeing posts move up the e-commerce value chain. So not just sorting and delivering more parcels and providing better last mile services, but moving up the value chain and into, for example, e-commerce warehousing and fulfillment. We're just thinking about Asia Pacific and Australia Post, uh, NZ Post, uh, Singapore Post, they all off offer these sorts of e-commerce warehousing and fulfillment services, um, but also posts in other regions as well. I live in Belgium and BPOC has pretty has yeah um, been pretty active in building out its warehousing and fulfillment operations. So a while back they bought a Dutch company called Active Ants, which offers fulfillment services in Europe, and BPOC on a larger scale bought Radial in 2017 a big uh, warehousing and fulfillment company in the US. So their e-commerce logistics services have greatly expanded with those acquisitions. And they're just a few examples of, of how Posts are not just delivering more parcels, but really enhancing the experience of the receiver and offering a wider range of services to e-retailers. Well, let's talk about competition then, because the parcels market is competitive. There's no monopoly on parcels. So how, how have Posts been reacting to that? What's the competition in the parcels market like? Yeah, so I think the first thing to note is that Posts have very different starting points in their domestic parcel markets. So some Posts are market leaders and have market shares upwards of 50%, while other Posts are only relatively minor players with uh, other delivery companies dominating the market instead. Despite those differences, what we're clearly seeing from our industry surveys, uh, regulator reports and so on, is that across all markets, competition is increasing and that the pandemic has intensified that competition. Um, on top of that, there's a wide and growing range of players competing for market share across countries. 
you, you have um, local delivery firms who are focused just on one specific national market. You have regional players like Aramex who are active across many markets. You have integrators, of course, FedEx and UPS uh, with their global networks. Uh, and there are also other new entrants muscling in on the market too, like crowdsourced delivery platforms, uh, many of which are, are teaming up with retailers for last mile delivery. There's also big e-retailers like Amazon and Alibaba who have moved down the value chain and into the last mile. And those big e-retailers are, are delivering more and more of their own parcels, uh, especially in big e-commerce markets. And Ian, I know you've talked a lot about Amazon's uh, moves into last mile delivery on the podcast, uh, and it's clearly been a, a big disruption in some markets and very likely will be in other markets in future, given you know, Amazon's scale and ability to quickly build last mile capacity through its delivery service partner program. So parcels market, highly competitive, very dynamic, many players, and uh, at the same time, uh, posts are responding. So Post Italian, for example, it has a 37% share of the B2C market in Italy, and it's making moves to increase that share. Uh, it recently renewed its delivery partnership with Amazon for another three years. It also this year partnered with a company called Farmapp for same day and uh, or same day home home delivery of medicine. Uh, it's also acquired some parcels and logistics specialists over the past year or so. Uh, one of the most recent being a company based in Hong Kong called. Sengi Express, which is a cross-border logistics specialist serving Chinese e-retailers uh, active in Italy. So that's just one example, again, of many of how posts are firming up their positions uh, in the parcels market. Let's talk about the financial side of things now. So how have posts been doing in terms of their financial performance? So I mentioned earlier that the postal industry has grown on aggregate in 2020. Uh, that growth trend was also true on average across the 53 posts in the report. So around two-thirds of posts saw stable or increasing revenue during the year. But COVID-19 has been a kind of pressure test for posts uh, across the world. So while some saw revenue and profit improve strongly in 2020, uh, others saw their financial performance weaken significantly during the year. There are obviously many different factors at play there, external factors like how hard the economy was hit, uh, the length and severity of lockdowns, uh, but also internal factors like whether they had sufficient capacity to deal with um, the surge in parcels. And also linking back to what I said earlier, um, their level of diversification. So more diversified posts outperformed their less diversified peers on average in 2020. And that's a general trend we've seen in recent years, not only for revenue and profit, but also more future focused indicators like investment intensity. Just looking at um, some more recent results. In a survey we ran in September 2021, we asked a, a range of industry experts about their views on the future, and the mood was pretty upbeat. 78% uh, of respondents were optimistic about the postal industry's future, and 75% expected the postal industry to emerge from, emerge from the pandemic uh, stronger than before. So a pretty sunny outlook. And we also recently analysed financial results for the first half of 2021, which seems to support that optimism. So on average and across the, the subset of posts that publish interim reports, total revenue was up 10% year on year and profitability also improved. Uh, and that was the case for both mail and parcel divisions uh, as mail volumes recovered slightly on average and parcel volumes continued to grow strongly. So again, a very interesting time to be tracking the, the industry's progress. Austin, if listeners want to find out more about the uh, 2021 IPC Global Postal Industry Report or any of the other stuff <laughs> that IPC does, where should they go? So, Ian, we've really just uh, scratched the surface of the report here today. Um, as I said earlier, it's a very comprehensive and, and data-rich analysis. So if listeners would like to know more about the Global Postal Industry Report, the 20-page summary of the report is publicly available on the IPC website. The full 150-page report is available for download by IPC's 25 member posts, uh, and it's also available for purchase for those outside of the, uh, the, the IPC membership. So to find out more, listeners can visit our website at ipc.be forward slash gpir. The website address is ipc.be slash gpir. Is that right? That's right. Excellent. I'll stick a link to that on the Postal Hub website as well. Austin Reynolds, Manager Market Intelligence at IPC. Thanks for joining us on the Postal Hub podcast today. Thanks a lot, Ian.
next week on the Postal Hub podcast. Helene Buldeo Rai joins me to talk about e commerce delivery and oh, it's just really, 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 really fascinating. You're going to want to catch this one. Also, coming up very soon, Brody Bueller from Escher Group returns to talk about more post well, about creating a high performance post. <laughs> it's it's, it's as simple as that. Great conversation. Looking forward to sharing that with you. If you want to make sure that you catch all of these episodes as they're released, subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform, whether it's Spotify or Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts. It's on all of them and probably many more that I don't even know about. Subscribe. You get each episode downloaded to the device you're choosing each week. And please do leave a rating and a review. That'd be great. If you're on LinkedIn, you can follow me on LinkedIn. Just search for me, Ian Kerr, and you can just follow me. don't have to send an invitation to connect or anything like that. Just follow me. It's a nice thing to do. If you want to contact me about anything at all, my email address is ian at thepostalhub.com. I'm Ian Kerr. Thanks for listening in. And I look forward to your company next time on the Postal Hub podcast.